we're chat. It's Nicole here on Wednesdays. And this week's topic is about, uh, it's actually submitted by Callie. And I really like this topic. It's about trans uh, portrayals in the media, uh, movies, TV, books, all of that kind of thing. Um, so I guess first I'll start off with uh, trans in the media. I kind of feel like that anytime I see any sort of uh, media attention towards trans issues, um, it's usually like a, a Lucy Lou special, first of all, you know, controversial issues or whatever. Um, it's usually not on Fox unless someone dies, <laughs> which I'll get to that part later. <laughs> But trans media, trans in the media is always portrayed as the same gender narrative. The words trapped in another gender's body, born into the wrong body, wanting to transition fully to the other gender because, you know, our nation just, at least America, I'm talking about American media, is so binary. And so it's, you know, you can be trans, just want to transition fully. But anyway, so there's never any talk about in between, which really bothers me. Um, I have seen a couple of really great documentaries on, um, you know, transgender queer issues. Um, probably my favorite is actually an MTV documentary, if you can believe it. I was surprised also. Um, but it's called Gender Rebel. And if you haven't seen it and you identify as genderqueer, this is going to be something that you're going to love. Because I know for me it was just like my life on screen, finally, something real where people weren't you know, dying or killing themselves. Um, it had portrayals of, of like three or four different gender journeys. I think three. Um, two of them didn't involve any surgery or testosterone or anything or estrogen. Um, and one did uh, involve actually testosterone. It was a um, female to male uh, transgender man. Um, and it was interesting because the uh, journeys that did not involve um, any kind of testosterone or surgery, um, you know, both of them were kind of with queer people or someone, one was with someone bisexual. Um, and the funny thing was that the, or ironic thing, I guess, was that the female to male transgendered man was and in a lesbian so relationship. a lot of it was like the struggle that, you know, his partner had with transition, being a lesbian and having to rethink those lines. And it was just a really thought provoking and interesting documentary, kind of low budget. But um, I thought the best portrayal of queer, genderqueer type of um, issues, because you, normally it's just that, you know, that trapped in another gender body trans narrative, which is applicable to a lot of people, but I just didn't relate to it. Um, trans people in movies, and what I've I noticed for the most part, about 90% of the time, is that trans people are usually portrayed as uh, transvestites, or drag queens, or if they're female birth assigned, then they want to transition completely to male. Uh, the most well-known trans movies that I can think of um, were Boys Don't Cry, of course, which is an amazing film, and Soldier's Girl, which is another really good film. Both extremely depressing, both the lead character dies. Why is this? Why? Why is it that when I watch a trans movie, I better get my clean Xbox out because, you know, they're going to die. It's just going to happen because, you know, society just can't handle it. And to me, this is, I have a problem with this. Here's why. Um, I think it's important to show the ignor you know, what can happen when ignorance reigns. I think that's super important. I think that, um that these, these films are incredibly important for non-trans people especially to watch uh, because I think it shows, you know, the humanity of trans people and the fact that um, the horrible things that can happen when ignorance and um, hate take over. That being said, I understand that that's important. But what I don't understand is as a person, as a genderqueer person, seeing Boys Don't Cry, seeing Soldier's Girl, um, although I related in some ways to the, you know, the story and to the um, tragedy of it all, I feel like it added to my fear of coming out as genderqueer. 
I feel like because there wasn't enough positive, um, you know, trans uh, trans people in movies and in film and documentaries, anything, <laughs> I feel that because of that, it added to the fear factor of coming out. And so that, I think, is the negative of having these, like, sort of um, tragic, you know, trans characters. Um, okay, so that's a film that I can think of. Um, TV shows. Um, there's two TV shows that I that I could think of that portrayed trans people. Uh, one was, of course, The L Word, um, Max. Um, <laughs> there were things I did and didn't like about this portrayal of Max. I actually really liked the, the testosterone storyline, uh, him getting it illegally and kind of being a little off balance because of that. I liked that um, he his sexuality changed or perceived sexuality changed um, as he started to transition. I thought that was interesting and that is a story that I've heard a lot of time, times from trans people um, that their sexuality will change or they will look at sex differently coming from a different gender um, place. So I thought that was cool. Uh, I liked that. That's a different story than you normally get. That's why I liked it. But they made him so unlikable, I feel. I feel like they made him whiny and annoying, and he didn't have depth, and he was just kind of like, oh, I don't know. Maybe it was just my opinion. And he didn't die, so that was good. Yeah, an improvement. Um, <laughs> but I just thought he was kind of like a blah extra character on the show, and I thought that, you know, he was just kind of an irritating character overall. Although, like I said, I didn't hate all the, all the storyline there. That word just, or that show really got on my nerves towards the end there. So maybe that tainted my opinion since he was more in the you know later seasons. Um, another one, uh, if you if you like guys like the show Law and Order SVU, which I know that I like the lovely, beautiful, amazing ADA um, ADAs on that show, <laughs> and of course Mariska Argate, come on. Uh, but they had an episode where actually the character or the actress that played Shane in The L Word was actually portrayed as a male to female transgendered woman. Um, and it kind of revealed another cliche that I hate about, um, you know, especially trans women get this one a lot. Um, I'm not going to tell the person I'm with that I'm trans and we're going to go into this long relationship where we fall in love and I'm not going to tell them and they're going to find out and freak out and et cetera. And that's pretty much what it was about. Um, and I'm not saying that that doesn't happen. I know that sometimes it's really difficult to come out as genderqueer or trans to, you know, somebody that you're attracted to, especially if their, you know, sexual orientation doesn't match up with that. But so many trans people want to be with queer people, want to be with you know, bisexual people or people that it doesn't matter, you know, I, I, I see a lot more of that than I see, you know, people lying to someone that's a different sexual orientation than they are. I'm sure it happens, but I just, I really haven't, haven't seen or heard of that much. So it's kind of interesting that that seems to always be portrayed <laughs> uh, in, in TV shows and stuff that, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trick you and, you know, deceive you. I don't know. It just, another, it just, it bothers me that it's like, oh, you're trans, so you must not have any morals, or you must not have any, like, ethical compass, you know, you're going to deceive and lie to me. I don't know, it just, that's the vibe I get, and like I said, maybe I'm paying too much attention, maybe it's not personal, <laughs> but it just feels all wrong to me. Why, why can't we have normal characters that are trans. Why does it even have to be necessarily an issue? You know? I mean, yeah, you could mention their trans. Does it have to be, like, the entire basis of their character? I mean, I don't know. I don't feel like being genderqueer is the only thing about my about me that's important. You know? And so I guess um, in answer to the question of do you think that there's anything that can be um, would be better in portrayals of trans or genderqueer people. And my thoughts on it are this. I think that there is a struggle, you know, in being trans and genderqueer. And I think that there's just not enough diversity, you know, in those characters. And this happened with gay people as well, you know? I mean, in the early 90s, you know, gay people were portrayed a certain way on TV, and now I feel like that it's opening up and it's more inclusive, you know, with shows like uh, Six Feet Under, 
where there was a you know long term. Um, gay couple and they were very complex characters and it really I mean their sexuality was definitely in there but it definitely wasn't the main part of of their characters on the show and so I think that gives me a little bit of hope but I do think that there should be more diversity in the way that trans people are portrayed um but I think that some of it's we haven't told our stories and I think that's what gender chat is about you know and I think that's what films about trans people are about and I think it's just we're trying to get our story out there because it's not the you know typical story and so people are going to put us in boxes and and bring out those cliches because that's all that they've ever seen so I think it's up to the trans community and the genderqueer community to tell our stories as much as possible especially if they don't fit that cliche you know I think that's all we can do you know okay so that's that's that topic it was a a good topic um so the bonus question this week is what is my favorite place um this is hard for me i've actually been a few places um i've been to jamaica i've been to mexico um but still out of you know other places i've been my favorite place is california <laughs> um uh, specifically northern california wine country san francisco san jose etc. I love the people. That's the main thing I love about it. And of course, the weather and the ocean. There's a lot of things I like about it, I guess. Um, but my ex-girlfriend and I went to California for a little over a week. And it was just, it was so much fun because we were able to be so open. You know, we were able to walk down the street holding hands and not get looks and not feel this sort of negative energy. It just wasn't an issue. It wasn't as if people even noticed. You know, everyone there had tattoos, which I don't know if you can see this or not, but um, I did get uh, a tattoo. It's in the beginning stages. It's got like three more sittings to go. But um, anyway, I everybody there had like tattoos and even the professionals, you know, and it was just such an open place. And, you know, <laughs> as we were coming back from California, you know, the whole week we had been like holding hands and just like being really affectionate with each other and it just wasn't an issue. And um, as we were coming home uh, on the shuttle bus back from the plane, the shuttle bus to the parking lot, basically, it's a huge freaking airport. So we were shuttled like from our plane to the parking lot and we were holding hands on the shuttle. Now this was back in Texas. And we immediately got stared at and like a horrible go to hell look from this guy in like cowboy boots, you know. <laughs> we honestly just forgot. And it was so depressing to realize that, to say, oh wow, you know, shit, now we have to put on our game face and, and be careful. Because as much as I hate to say, oh, if you're trans, if you're genderqueer, if you're gay, be careful, you might die. <laughs> Sometimes that's true and you do have to be careful, you know, here in the south with how much um you let people see into your life and that's sad truth but it is the truth um and i try to be as out as i possibly can and as happy about who i am as i can be and, and usually people will um respect that um, they see that i'm comfortable with it so they're good but it's just if you look over see someone staring at you and it's it's it seems like they have contempt for you that's when you know you choose to let them have power over you and sometimes sometimes I, I find myself doing that um, because I, I get scared but um, I am trying to be brave <laughs> and I think that's the only way we can push forward really um, as a people as a nation as individuals I think it's how we'll evolve is to just go ahead and put ourselves out there and be as open as possible without putting ourselves in danger. So I guess that's my spill for the day. But you guys have a great week.